Hello everyone, today we're going to read chapter 7 through 10 of Numbers, and I will pray. Our Father in Heaven, may you bless everyone who's going to listen to these chapters. May you please protect everyone and help everyone who's going through a hard time. Lord, give us the Holy Spirit, your wisdom and understanding, and help us to grow in your ways every day, and please be a part of our lives every single day. Thank you, God, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, so we are on chapter 7. Chapter 7, uh, Offerings of Dedication. On the day Moses set up the tabernacle, he anointed it and set it apart as holy. He also anointed and set apart all his furnishings and the altar with its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the tribal leaders who had registered the troops, came and brought their offerings together and brought their offerings. Together they brought six large wagons and twelve oxen. There are there was a wagon for every two liters and an ox for each liter. They presented these to the Lord in front of the tabernacle. Then the Lord said to Moses, Receive their gifts and use their ox, these oxen and wagons for transporting the tabernacle. Distribute them among the Levites according to the work they have to do. So Moses took the wagons and oxen and presented them to the Levites. He gave two wagons and four oxen to the Gershonite division for their work, and he gave four wagons and eight oxen to the Merarite division for their work. All their work was done under the leadership of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. But he gave none of the wagons or oxen to the Kohathite division, since they were required to carry the sacred objects of the tabernacle on their shoulders. The leaders also presented dedication gifts for their altar at the time it was anointed. They each placed their gifts before the altar. The Lord said to Moses, Let one leader bring his gift each day for the dedication of the altar. On the first day, Nashon, son of Aminadab, leader of the tribe of Judah, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a single basin weighing one and three-fourths of a pound as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat and a sin for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Nishon, son of Aminadab. On the second day, Nathaniel, son of Zoar, leader of the tribe of Issachar, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Nathaniel son of Zawar. On the third day Eliab, son of Helon, leader of the tribe of Zebulun, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with the grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eliab, son of Helon. On the fourth day, Eliezer, son of Shadur, leader of the tribe of Reuben, presented his offerings. His offerings consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a fourth pounds, and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourth pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with green offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering. 
and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eliezer, son of Shidor. On a fifth day, Shalumiel, son of Zerishadai, leader of the tribe of Simeon, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a fourth pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with the grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Shilumiel, son of Zerishadai. On the sixth day, Eli Asaph, son of Duel, leader of the tribe of Gad, presented his offering presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one quarter pounds of a silver basin and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eli Eliasaf, son of Duel. On the seventh day, Elishama, Eli son of Amihud, leader of the tribe of Ephraim, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and silver basin weighing one and three-fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and a five one-year-old male lamb. And five one-year-old male lambs. This was an offering brought by Elishama, son of Amihud. On the eighth day, Gamaliel, son of Ped, uh, Pedazur, leader of the tribe of Manasseh, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Gam Gamaliel, son of Pedazur. On the ninth day, Abidan, son of Gideoni, leader of the tribe of Benjamin, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with the grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull and a ram a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, a five one-year, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Abedin, son of Gideon, Gideoni. On the tenth day, Ahizer, son of Amishadai, leader of the tribe of Dan, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter, weighing three and a quarter pounds in a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a, he brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Ahizer, son of Amishadai. On the 11th day, Pagiel, son of Orkan, Okran, leader of the tribe of Asher, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, 
a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and a five one and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Pagiel, son of Akron. On the twelfth day, Ahira, son of Enon, leader in the tribe of Nephtali, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourth pounds. This is measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Ahira, son of Enan. So this was the dedication, uh, this was a dedication offering brought by the leaders of Israel at the time the altar was anointed. Twelve silver platters, twelve silver basins, and twelve gold incense containers. Each silver platter weighed three and a quarter pounds, and each silver basin weighed one and three fourth pounds. The total weight of the silver was sixty pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Each of the twelve gold containers was filled with incense weighed four ounces as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. The total weight of the gold was three pounds. Twelve young bulls, twelve rams, and twelve one-year-old male lambs were donated for the burnt offerings along with the prescribed grain offerings. Twelve male goats were bought, brought for the sin offerings. Twenty-four bulls, sixty rams, sixty male goats, and sixty one-year-old male lambs were donated for the peace offerings. This was a dedication offering to the altar, and it was anointed. Whenever Moses went into the tabernacle to speak with the Lord, he ha he heard the voice speaking to him from between the two cherubim. Above the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant, the Lord spoke to him from there. Wow. Twelve minutes. Chapter eight. Preparing for preparing the lamps. The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron the following instructions. When you set up the seven lamps in the lampstand, place them so their light shines forward in front of the lampstand. So Aaron did this. He set up seven lamps so they were reflected so they reflected their light toward forward just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The entire lampstand from its base to its decorative blossoms were made of beaten gold. It was built according to the exact design the Lord had shown Moses. The Levites dedicated. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and make them ceremonially clean. Do this by sprinkling them with the water of purification and have them shave their entire body and wash their clothing. Then they will be ceremonially clean. Have them bring a young bull and a grain offering of choice flour moistened with olive oil along with the second young bull for a sin offering then assembled the whole community of israel and presented the and present the levites at the entrance of the tabernacle when you present the levites before the lord the people of israel must lay their hands on them raising his hands aaron must then present the levites to the lord as a special offering from the people of israel thus dedicating them to the lord's service next the levites will lay their hands on the heads of the young bulls presented Present one of one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to the Lord to purify the Levites and make them right with the Lord. Then have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and raise your hands and present them as a special offering to the Lord. In this way, you will set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and the Levites will belong to me. After this, they may go into the tabernacle, do their work because you have purified them and presented them as a special offering of all the people of israel the levites are reserved for me i have claimed them for myself in place of the firstborn sons of the israelites i have taken the levites as their substitute for all the firstborn males among the people of israel are for all the firstborn males among the people of israel are mine both of pe both of people and of animal, I set them apart for myself on the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. Yes, I have claimed the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons of Israel. And of all the Israelites, I have assigned the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They will serve in the tabernacle on behalf of the Israelites and make sacrifices to purify the people, so the plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. 
so no plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. <laughs> so Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel dedicated the Levites carefully following all the Lord's instructions to Moses. The Levites purified themselves from sin and washed their clothes, and Aaron lifted them up and presented them to the Lord as a special offering. He then offered a sacrifice to purify them and make them right with the Lord. After that, the Levites went into the tabernacle to perform their duties, assisting Aaron and his sons. So they carried out all the commands that the Lord gave Moses concerning the Levites. The Lord also instructed Moses, This is the rule that the Levites must follow. They must begin serving in the tabernacle at the age of 25, and they must retire at the age of 50. After retirement, they may assist their fellow Levites by serving as guards as, as at the tabernacle, but they may not officiate in the service. This is how you must assign duties to the Levites. Chapter 9, the second Passover. A year after Israel's departure from Egypt, the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. In the first month of that year, he said, tell the Israelites to celebrate the Passover as at the prescribed time at twilight. On the fourteenth day of the first month, be sure to follow all my decrees and regulations concerning the celebration. So Moses told the people to celebrate the Passover in the wilderness of Sinai as twilight fell on the fourteenth day of the month. And they celebrated the festival there, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. But some of the men had been ceremonially defiled by touching a dead body, so they could not celebrate the Passover that day. They came to Moses and Aaron that day and said, We have become ceremonially unclean by touching a dead body. But why should we be prevented from presenting the Lord's offering at the proper time when the rest of the is with the rest of the Israelites? Moses answered, Wait here until I have received instructions for you from the Lord. This was the Lord's reply to Moses. Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people now or in future generations are ceremonially unclean at Passover time because of touching a dead body, or if they are on a journey and cannot be present at the ceremony, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They must offer the Passover sacrifice one month later at twilight on the 14th day of the second month. They must eat the Passover lamb at the time with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. They must not leave any of the lamb until the next morning, and they must not break any of its bones. They must follow all the normal regulations concerning the Passover. But those who neglect to celebrate the Passover at the regular time, even though they are ceremonially clean and not away on a trip, will be cut off from the community of Israel. If they fail to present the Lord's offering at the proper time, they will suffer the consequences of their guilt. And if foreigners living among them, I mean, living among you, want to celebrate the Passover to the Lord, they must follow the same decrees and regulations. The same laws apply both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. The fiery cloud. On the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. But from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. This was the regular pattern at the night. The cloud that covered the tabernacle had the appearance of fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way, they traveled and camped at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. They, then they, remained in their camp as long as they could, as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. If the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days, so the people would stay for only a few days, as the Lord commanded. Then at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed only overnight and lifted the next morning but day or night when the cloud lifted the people broke camp and moved on whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle for two days a month or a year the people of israel stayed in camp and did not move on but as soon as it lifted they broke camp and moved on so they camped and or traveled at the lord's command and they did whatever the lord told them through moses chapter 10 the silver trumpets now the Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver for calling the community to assemble and for signaling the breaking of camp. 
When both trumpets are blown, everyone must gather before you at the entrance of the tabernacle. But, it o but if only one trumpet is blown, then only the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel, must present themselves to you. When you sound the signal to move on, the tribes camped on the east side of the tabernacle must break camp and move forward. When you sound the signal a second time, the tribes camped on the south will follow. You must sound short blasts as a signal for moving on. But when you call the people to an assembly, blow the trumpets with a different signal. Only the priests, Aaron's descendants, are allowed to blow the trumpets. This is a permanent law for you to be observed from generation to generation. When you arrive in your own land, go to war against your enemies who attack. Sound the alarm with the trumpets. Then the Lord, your God, will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in time. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness too, sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month, and blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpets will remind your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. The Israelites leave Sinai. In the second year, after Israel's departure from Egypt, on the twentieth day of the second month, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle of the covenant. So the Israelites set out from the wilderness of Sinai and traveled on from place to place until the cloud stopped in the wilderness of Paran. When the people set out for the first time following the instructions the Lord had given through Moses, Judah's troops led the way. They marched behind the banner, behind their banner, and their leader was Nashon, son of Aminadab. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Issachar, led by Nathaniel, son of Zoar, and the troops of the tribe of Zebulon, led by Eliab, son of Helon. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonite and Mer Merarite divisions of the Levites were next in the line of march carrying the tabernacle with them reuben's troops went next marching behind their banner their leader was eliezer son of shidor they were joined by the troops of the tribe of simeon led by shilumiel son of zorishadai Zer and the troops of the tribes of gad led by elisa eliasaf son of duel next came the Koahite division of the Levites, carrying the sacred objects from the tabernacle. Before they arrived at the next camp, the tabernacle would already be set up at its new location. Ephraim's troops went next, marching behind their banner. Their leader was Elish, El, Elishama, son of Amihud. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Manasseh, led by Gami, Gamaliel, son of Pedazur, and the troops of the tribe of Benjamin, led by Abidan, son of Gideoni. Dan's troops went last, marching behind their banner and serving as a rear guard for all the tribal camps. Their leader was Ahizer, son of Amishadai. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Asher, led by Pagiel, son of Orkran, and the troops of the tribes of Naphtali, led by Ahira, son of Enan. This was the order in which the Israelites marched division by division. One day Moses said to his brother-in-law, Hobab, son of Raul, Reuel, Rawel, the Midianite, We are on our way to the place the Lord has promised us. For he said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised wonderful blessings for Israel. But Hobab, Hobab replied, No, I will not go. I must return to my own land and my family. And family. Please don't leave us, Moses pleaded. You know the places in the wilderness where we should camp. Come be our guide. If you do, we will share with you all the blessings the Lord has given us. They marched for three days after leaving the mountain of the Lord with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord's Covenant moving ahead of them to show them where to stop and rest. As they moved on each day, the cloud and the, of the Lord hovered over them. And whenever the Ark set out, Moses would shout, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee before you. And when the ark was set down, he would say, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. All right, uh, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything. Please forgive us for the wrongs. Help us change. Help us grow spiritually. And please be with us all the days of our lives. Thank you, God, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. See you on the next episode.